Hello and welcome to this tutorial on learning the tools in Premiere Pro. Now we've learned quite a few tools already. We've learned to be able to do trims, so if we click at the end of a track and pull it back we trim, but we leave a space. And we've also learned the ripple edit tool, so when you click on the ripple edit tool and you go to an edit point and you pull that edit point back, you're going to reduce the length of the clip and automatically fill in that space, which will have the effect of reducing the overall length of your timeline. OK, I'm going to Control Z to undo that. We've also learned that if you happen to have the Trim tool and you hold the Control key on a PC or the Command key on the Mac, that automatically gives you the Ripple Edit tool to achieve the same function. OK, we've also learned about the Rolling Edit tool, where if you click on the Rolling Edit tool and you go to a transition, you can move the transition as long as there's headroom or tailroom, you can pull it backwards and forwards and keep the overall length exactly the same. Control Z or Command Z on the Mac to undo that. OK, so we've learnt these tools. But wouldn't it be brilliant if there was a way of quickly going through all the edit points on our timeline to be able to quickly trim them, ripple delete them or rolling edit them so that we can work through a timeline really quickly and if possible even use keyboard shortcuts as opposed to constantly having to use the mouse and pulling things backwards and forwards. Well there is a tool that does just that in Premiere Pro. Now the first thing I want you to notice is my current time indicator is not actually on a transition, it's mid clip. Now I'm going to open up this tool and I want you to watch the current time indicator. Now to get to the tool you either go to the Windows menu and you choose the trim monitor or as you can see the keyboard shortcut is the letter T. So I'm going to hit the letter T and as you can see the trim monitor is opened and the first thing that's happened is my current time indicator has jumped to the next edit point. And there is a lot of feedback in this particular monitor as long as we understand how to read it. Now the obvious button here is that we have the option to be able to turn on our safe margins for action and titles so we can turn them on and off in case we've got some titles we want to watch and keep in safe areas. That's just a bit of feedback. And here we can choose to edit on different video tracks. This won't edit between video tracks but it will allow you to edit edit points on different video tracks. Now we've only got video on video one so that's all we want to do. Okay so what do we have? Well right at the top we have a blue line. This blue line says both clips are selected. And because both clips are selected, that means I can do a rolling edit. And if I put my mouse right between the two clips, I get the rolling edit tool. I don't have to be absolutely precise. As you can see, I just need to get near. And as soon as I'm there, I can actually click, hold and drag one way or the other and start to perform a rolling edit. Very easy to do. Now, if I go on my clip on the left, you'll see that I've actually got my Ripple Edit tool. Now, this is the Ripple Edit. This is going to reduce the length of the clip and reduce the length of the timeline. So if I click and drag on that one, I can actually pull the whole clip back. And I now want you to watch down in my timeline. You'll see that when I let go, the clip reduces in length and the whole timeline reduces in length. Let go, and as you can see, it's much shorter. Now, if I want to get back to how it originally looked, and I'm not sure where it was, Notice that we have the out shift point, which talks about the out point of this clip, how much I've shifted it by. I've shifted it by minus 3 seconds and 21. Well, I can either click and drag and bring it up to zero, or I find it simpler to click in there, hit zero and return. And that's taking it back to exactly how it was to start off with. Notice that I have feedback here. You've probably seen this in your source monitor. In actual fact, you can pull this out to see the whole of the length. This is telling me that of the very long clip, which has lots of headroom and tail room, this is the bit that's seen in my timeline. So if I wanted to, I could trim the clip longer and let go. You can see that's lengthen the clip. I can trim the clip shorter just as long as there is head or tail room. And this dark grey area tells me that there is head or tail room. But if you see on the other side, it shows me that there is no headroom. However, if I pull out the zoom bar, you'll see that there's plenty of tail room, but I can't access that. The only way I'll be able to access that is when I go on to the next transition. All I can do is the out point of the previous clip and the in point of the next clip. So it's telling me that actually there is no spare footage. I can't roll the clip this way, but I can roll the clip that way. And let me demonstrate. If I take my rolling edit tool and I pull it this way, it won't go. But if I pull it the other way, you can see I can roll a long way. OK, so you can only do a rolling edit or a ripple edit as long as there is head or tail footage. And as you can see on this clip, there's lots of head and tail footage. And it's the tail footage we can use on the outgoing clip. It's the head footage which isn't there for the incoming clip. OK, this number here is telling me 
whereabouts the actual out point is on the clip, not on the timeline. You'll see that the timeline is, this is the point where the current time indicator is 23.07 seconds in, whereas the clip before, I'm using the out point of that clip, which happens to be at 31 minutes, 46 seconds and seven frames long. So you can see it was obviously a very long clip. So that's telling me the out point of the clip and this is telling me the in point of the next clip, but it's not the time on the timeline. Now I have jog tools down here to be able to do fine edits so that I can actually jog one or more frames just to get exactly the right place I want it to be for the out point of the previous clip or for the in point of the next clip. Obviously I can only go one way on that particular one. And for the rolling edit, the jog wheel in the middle will just let you go frame by frame for a rolling edit. And of course you've got plus one frame one way, plus five frames, again minus one, minus five, so you just have ones that can move you on. To get to the previous edit point, you can click this button. Get to the next edit point, you can pick that one. And as you see, the keyboard shortcuts for these are page up and page down. So page down will take you down the timeline, page up will take you back up the timeline. Now this play button here will actually only play the transition. So if I click on that, plays the transition and stops. However, you do have a loop function if you want to do some fine tuning. So if you click loop and then hit play, it will continuously loop through the clip until you hit the stop button, going over and over and over again. Okay, so that's lots of the tools. We can do a ripple edit by clicking and dragging and moving the clip backwards to shorten or lengthen our timeline. We can do a rolling edit to move the clips with great ease. We can play through the transitions and have a look at them. We can jog them one frame at a time. We can jog the rolling edit one frame at a time and the out point. We can actually trim the clips down here as well. So we've got an awful lot of tools that we can play with in here. But I mentioned earlier that this can all be done with keyboard shortcuts. And this is perhaps the really strong point of this tool. So that you can work on the keyboard and you don't have to keep going backwards and forwards to the mouse. So that you can bomb down the timeline, going to each edit in time, quickly sorting it out and moving on to the next. These are the keyboard shortcuts that you want. On the PC you want the Alt key, and on the Mac you're going to want the Option key, and it's Alt or Option 1, 2 and 3. So if I hit Alt 1, please notice this blue bar at the top, at the moment it's over the right hand clip, but if I hit Alt 1, it's over both clips, telling me both are selected and I'm now ready to do a rolling edit. Alt 2, or Option 2, is going to select the outgoing clip, or the clip on the left, Alt or Option 3 is going to select the incoming clip or the clip on the right. OK, so that's how you select the clips. Now I'm going to hit Alt or Option 1 to get both clips selected. The next keyboard shortcut that's really important are the forward and backward arrow keys on your keyboard. If I start pushing the right hand or the forward arrow key, you'll start seeing that I'm going frame by frame performing a rolling edit. If I go back the other way, You'll see that my rolling edit is going back the other way. So with both clips selected, the right and left arrow keys are performing rolling edits. If I now do Alt or Option 2 to select the outgoing clip or the clip on the left, and I start to do the right or left arrow keys, I am performing ripple edits, where I'm editing the clip up and down. If I choose Alt or Option 3, I'm choosing the incoming clip or the clip on the right, and once again, I'm performing ripple edits to go through the timeline really quickly. So I've quickly done that clip, say I'm happy with it, then I push page down to get to the next one, and there's the next one, and I can choose Alt or Option 1, and I can do a rolling edit, Alt or Option 2, and I can do a ripple edit, Alt or Option 3, ripple edit, you can't see much on this one, let's do page down and find one that we can see a lot on. How about this one here? Okay, so alter option one, do a rolling edit, we can see the birds moving along. Alter option two, we want to make sure that we've got the focus right on that particular one, because if we go back too far you'll see that uh, the focus changes between the nets and the birds. And then alter option three, we can actually trim that little bird wandering along and choose the exact place that we want to be, we want the seagull to start. So that's how you can move quickly along your timeline using the page up and page down keys to quickly get to your edit points use Alt or Option 1, 2 and 3 to either do a rolling edit or a ripple edit either way and end up performing the task really quickly as you go through and every time you hit the space bar you're going to be playing the transition that you're presently over. So if I hit the space bar you'll see the transition. 
as you can see I've got the loop function on so that would carry on looping forever until I hit the spacebar again so everything's done from the keyboard you don't actually have to use the mouse at all to be able to do all of these functions to run down your timeline to quickly perform all these subtle edits to make it look absolutely perfect and move on well I hope you found this tutorial useful as you can see the trim monitor can significantly speed up your workflow particularly when you have a timeline that is just full of edits my name's Andrew Davis. thank you for watching mm -hmm.